Hi students, welcome to the session 4 of Habitat of the Living. In today's session, we will discuss about major habitats, that is mountains and polar regions. In the previous session, we discussed about deserts, grasslands and forests. So let us start with today's session and learn about these major habitats, the other major habitats. Yes, mountains. Students, animals that live in mountainous regions not only have to withstand the dramatic temperature changes, but they also have to withstand the lower oxygen levels because they are the living organisms. So obviously they need oxygen to breathe in, to survive. But we know that mountainous regions have lower level of oxygen and so it is very much necessary for these animals to adapt themselves to adjust themselves in such type of regions and to withstand this temperature changes and also lower level of oxygen or oxygen level which is very less in these regions. Right, so these animals which are found in the mountainous regions are such animals which have adapted themselves and we will see them later on. So basically the types of mountain mountainous regions they are temperate also, they are tropical also and they do have a temperature range and the annual rainfall here ranges from some centimeters to some centimeters. So let us see that what type of temperature do these regions have. Yes, the annual rainfall varies between 8 centimeter and 100 centimeter and the temperature ranges between minus 45 to 30 degree. 30 degrees centigrade. So basically we can say that there is a varied range of temperature in these type of regions that is minus 45 means how cold it is and minus uh, sorry plus 30 degrees centigrade. So there is a much diversity of plants and animals also we can see a diversity of plants and animals over these regions also. So mountain ranges are found all around the world and they are the result of the plate movement beneath the earth's surface, earth's crust. That is why mountains can range in height from a small hill to 8,848 meters which is the height of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. You all must be knowing. The animals so the animals that live in these regions have to adapt themselves in such way, such a way that they can withstand these temperature changes. So there are basically two main types of mountain range which are temperate mountains and tropical mountains. Now temperate mountains tend to be fairly cold all year round and much more seasonal than that of the tropical mountains. In the spring season and summer season there is a burst of plant life at high altitude which encourages herbivores up the mountain because herbivores they eat plants so in spring season these plants grow and it is very helpful very good for the herbivores and the temperate mountains can be found in Europe, Central Asia and North and South America so basically the trom uh, this tropical mountains have much warmer climates and have a few plants which have specially adapted to live at high altitudes or to grow at high altitudes. So the tropical mountain ranges can be found in Africa, Southeast Asia and South America. And here are the wildlife and the plant species. Let's see what type of plant species we can see, what are the man which animals adapt themselves to survive in these type of regions. Yes. Plants like conifers, grasses, shrubs are grown over here. Here you can see 
these are the mountainous regions and we can see some of the conifers over here there are grasses also and shrubs too which have woody stems and animals like deer cowgirl birds of prey like vultures black vulture this is a beautiful image of a black vulture then llama llama is a sheep then monkey mountain gorilla and this is the beautiful image of cougar so these animals are found in the mountainous regions so basically wildlife that inhabits mountainous regions has be able to survive successfully at high altitudes so any creature that lives in the mountains must also be able to cope up with the changing temperatures that means for every 200 meters an animal goes up a mountain the temperature drops by 1 degree centigrade so plants are here also very seasonal in the mountains and those plants that do occur all year round such as conifers must be extremely hardy and able to deal with the cold temperature so conifers are the ones conifers are the plants which are able to deal with these temperatures so there are many species of hoofed and herbivores mammals such as goats deer sheep and llamas which are which have adapted well to living in the mountains and are often found grazing on ledges or on cliff faces here on cliff faces or ledges so these herbivores move up the mountain where there is vegetation further up during the spring and summer season and they move back down again in the autumn season when it begins to get colder and food is more scarce so these herbivores obviously these animals which live that live in the mountains obviously attract large predators to inhabit it mountainous regions such as bears cougars and mountain lions so there are also a number of animal species that are found on the mountains but inside them many smaller animal species have adapted to living their lives in the safety of caves and crevices so here you can see some of the beautiful images of the mountainous regions there are some caves here you can see can you see this there are some caves and crevices where many smaller animal species have been adapted to live their lives in the safety for their safety so caves are popular homes for amphibians such as toads and salamanders numerous species of insect and mammals such as bats although the mountains themselves are standing strong which you can see in the pictures very clearly there are numerous threats to the wildlife that inhabits mountain habitats like deforestation quarrying and the development of sky resorts which are the most damaging advances to mountain wildlife along with global warming and climate change which affects the growth of plants over here and also the animals the survival of animals at higher altitudes so basically this is about the mountain mountainous regions where there is climate difference where there is temperature range between minus 45 to 30 degree centigrade 30 degree celsius and some of the species of animals and plants they survive over here because they can withstand these harsh conditions of these regions so that was all about the mountains now let us study about the other important habitat that is polar regions so do not get confused between mountains and polar regions because there are some polar regions polar regions are very different from the mountains like the polar regions are the coldest places on earth because the sun is hardly seen during the winter and it is seen 24 hours a day in the summer season so these are some of the coldest coldest places on earth 
Mountains are not the coldest places on earth. So we can say that some animals that can withstand very, very harsh conditions can survive in these regions. Because the annual rainfall or we can say the snowfall is less than 25 centimeters over here and temperature ranges between minus 88 to 15 degrees Celsius. Here you can see from here the starts mounting uh, the polar regions. You can see how that there is some snowy region and the water here gets frozen in such a temperature range that is minus 88 degrees. So you can just imagine that the polar regions are the coldest ones and they differ the most from every other habitat on the planet. So during the summer months the, the days receive 24 hours of pure sunshine but during the winter the sun is barely seen at all. Animals that inhabit nature's freezers have to be well adapted to living in the cold and often have a thick layer of fat or blubber to help to keep them warm. So there are two main polar regions in the world and we know it very well. They are famously called the Arctic and the Antarctic. The Arctic and the Antarctic. So the Arctic Circle and the Arctic tundra region are found in the North Pole and it covers nearly 5 million square miles of the top of the Northern Hemisphere while whereas the Antarctic region is found at the South Pole and although the animals are very different here the polar regions are fairly similar places to live. So what happens that the Arctic is made up of ice which is floating on the ocean and Antarctic is a rocky continent covered in ice. So there is somewhat difference. There is very little rainfall in the polar regions mainly because it is so cold. We just discussed that the annual rainfall is less than 25 centimeters. So there is very little rainfall in these regions mainly because it is very cold. That and it is so cold that there is very little water in the air. So no cloud formation is there. So the main difference between the North and the South Pole is that the Arctic is connected to the Europe, Europe and Canada while meaning there are more species of both animals and plants than in the Antarctic which is completely isolated from the rest of the world. So less or fewer species of both animals and plants are found in Antarctic region as compared to the Arctic region. So what is that? That the warmer spring and the summer months in the Arctic Circle encourages the growth of plants and grasses which draws herbivores grazing animals further to North Pole and there are some animals which can survive these harsh conditions and some plants. So let us see. Yes, there are some conifers which can survive in these harsh conditions. These are the pictures of the temperature or uh, this is the picture of these are the pictures taken in the one winter months when there is very high snowfall. Means we can say that the rainfall is less than 25 centimeters. So these are the beautiful pictures where there are conifers which can survive these harsh conditions as well as animals are there, polar bears, whales, leopard seals and uh, sorry, leopard seals and penguins. So here is the beautiful picture of leopard seals and this you know very well, polar bear. Right, so this is a picture of a polar bear. So these animals, there are some species like lemmings and arctic hares, they can also be found in this region, arctic region, often closely followed by foxes or large arctic owls. There are wolves also, which are the top predators of the arctic region and the polar bears, they bear dominant 
the bears dominate the frozen waters which are deeper in there are seals killer whales and sea lions walruses and narwhals they can all commonly spotted feeding on the fish in the arctic circle because fish is generally available in this type of region which is a food for such animals so the animals in the antarctic live on a very carnivorous diet like here you can see this is the penguin this is the killer whale there are no plants growing on the frozen antarctic surface but there are plants which grow in the arctic surface like we saw the conifers so what happens that there are not so much of plants growing on the frozen antarctic surface so animals must eat other animals in order to survive so numerous species of fish inhabit the waters beneath the ice which means that there is plenty of food for carnivores birds and mammals to eat like penguins they are the most common animal found in antarctic as there are many species which are spread across the continent and even for even further north they hunt the fish there are larger predators such as leopard seals and killer whales what happens that whales inhabit the water around the frozen islands and huge whales flock to the antarctic in order to eat the food in the nutrient rich waters so the killer whales what do they do they flock to the antarctic in order to eat the food in the nutrient rich waters and these are the penguin the penguins they are also most commonly found in antarctic so the climate change and global warming have had the biggest impact on the polar regions as the increasing temperature causes more and more ice to melt which is now being a very serious issue that ice is melting at a higher rate so basically this climate change and global warming have had the high biggest impact on the polar regions as the increasing temperature causes the ice to melt here you can see this picture so it is these pictures which depict that ice is melting because of this global warming and you will be very amazed to know there is one fact that in 1961 the antarctic treaty was signed which prevents the antarctic from being commercially exploited sadly protecting the arctic is a very different case as mining for oil and minerals fishing and hunting takes place in many areas too so it is somewhat a sad thing but this is actually happening so walrus seal penguin polar bear these are some of the animals which are found in the polar regions and always remember that the plant species and the animal species which are surviving over here have to withstand many harsh conditions with extreme temperatures so that was all about these two major habitats the mountains and the polar regions i hope you like this session learning about these habitats so we are been we have been through uh, we are through with major habitats with five major habitats and the last habitat which we will discuss is aquatic habitat that we will discuss in the next session so see you in the, at the next session till then keep learning and have a nice time